Hello and welcome back to my favorite people. Hope you're doing well. I'm incredibly excited for today's video because I know it's been a painful few weeks. We've been seeing classic Bitcoin summer chop price action like we've seen each and every year outside of the mania years of 2021 and 2017. And of course, we've also seen quite a bit of underperformance from Bitcoin compared to the larger and safer S&P 500, which has been grinding higher over the past few weeks while Bitcoin has been in a downtrend with lower highs and lower lows. And of course, we're also seeing a ton of fear and panic surrounding the sell pressure coming from the US and German governments, as well as the looming Mt. Gox repayments and the Bitcoin miner capitulation, as Bitcoin miners are forced to sell their reserves to try and cover expenses and survive during these lower profitability post having periods. And of course, when you combine all of those factors, you get some of the most fearful sentiment we've seen as shown by the lowest fear and greed index reading since 17K Bitcoin in early 2023, right after we had experienced the FTX collapse. And I know that in previous cycles, it was hard for me to manage emotions and not make mistakes during these time periods. Maybe you're tempted to trade Bitcoin on leverage and make up for the fact that we're just chopping around and you join these liquidations that are really getting close to hundreds of millions each and every day. It can also be very tempting to sell everything and buy it all back once this sell pressure is behind us. But of course, that's easier said than done because it's hard to know exactly where the market is going to bottom. So the best way I have found to navigate these periods is to stick with what I believe is a relatively conservative portfolio for me and to be prepared for multiple cycle scenarios in terms of what path Bitcoin could take and how low Bitcoin potentially could go and to have a plan for each and one of those outcomes. But most importantly, it's zooming out and looking at the big picture and reminding myself of my Bitcoin long term thesis. And although this cycle has been a little bit different because we made an early all time high, which of course made everybody euphoric and piling into altcoins perhaps a little bit early because of all the excitement surrounding the ETFs, we see that Bitcoin spends quite a bit more time accumulating below the previous all time high usually. And we almost saw an 18 month reaccumulation in the previous cycle. And perhaps this time we got ahead of ourselves. So we're entering that reaccumulation period. Now we have no idea how long it will go on or how low it will go. We will, of course, monitor that as we go along. And of course, the lower the price level, the less likely we are to get there. But I'm open to different scenarios. But for me, I think patience and just sitting on our hands this summer and not making any emotional mistakes are going to be the best way to survive and make it to the other side as we see Bitcoin do something similar to what it's done historically. But there's always small changes cycle after cycle. For example, we had the double bubble in the 2013 cycle. 2017 was a way more smooth curve slash parabola. And then obviously in 2021, we had a super long reaccumulation and then a very steep increase and then a double top. And this time is probably going to be different from all three of those scenarios, but it's hard to know exactly what's going to happen in advance. So being prepared for multiple outcomes is the approach that I prefer. And funny enough, I know talking about ETF inflows has become a meme now, but we are seeing ETF investors buy the dip as prices go down. This should help reduce volatility to the downside because this is just spot buying and not the leverage buying that we've seen in this market so often that results in these huge liquidation events where the markets just go down abruptly buyers stepping in and buying with spot should help make the downtrend a little bit slower and less painful but the path is still unclear although i still have a base case of the normal cycle scenario which means we could go as low as 40k depending on how long this reaccumulation period takes it's really hard to know for sure until we get more data and see how well the market can absorb this sell pressure as for Bitcoin itself, we are now officially in a downtrend with lower highs and lower lows on the weekly chart. Unless something magical were to happen in the next 48 hours and Bitcoin is able to close the weekly above 61 and a half, 
that looks incredibly unlikely as of right now. So although it's very likely we get a bounce here, I still would expect Bitcoin to trade lower prices after such a large structure break. But if we can see 61.5K get reclaimed, we can talk about bullish scenarios on maybe saying that was enough. But based on current structure, this looks like the start of a downtrend instead of what everybody wants it to be, which is some quick liquidation V reversal, which tends to be pretty rare in general. We saw one recently with the ETF launch, but that was because the inflows caught everybody off guard and we ended up seeing that quick rally to the upside, but it doesn't look like we're gonna see that this time around because of the sell pressure we spoke of from the governments, from Mt. Gox, and from the Bitcoin miners. Now there is some hope we are seeing some weakness from the dollar index because rate cut expectations are getting pulled a little bit closer thanks to that unemployment rate print we spoke of. But again, as long as the dollar index is above its 20 week moving average and above its previous swing low of 104.5, I still can't, I still don't think we can call this a breakdown quite yet, but we will definitely keep a close eye on it because of how important we know the dollar index is for Bitcoin's mania phases and for the alt season that everybody is so desperately waiting for. But for now, it looks like the dollar index is at the very least going to go sideways in the short term while Bitcoin continues to have this downtrend. As for the chart we all wish Bitcoin looked like, the S&P 500, an incredible weekly candle last week, just a huge green candle above all of this previous price action, which is pretty crazy. And of course, we mentioned the divergence already, but we really don't see this that often. So eventually one of these is gonna have to catch up to the other one, but that divergence lasted for almost a year in 2019. So hard to know what's gonna happen in the short term, but definitely something we'll be keeping an eye on over the next few weeks and months. We know Bitcoin tends to chop around and be weak in the summers, whereas the S&P 500 might just continue grinding higher. But of course, we'll monitor that divergence and see what happens. As for Ethereum, obviously pretty ugly chart after it followed Bitcoin to the downside, still holding on to these equal lows, but equal lows is usually not something I believe in. Usually you see price fall below it and liquidate all the leverage, then grind higher if it's going to do that. But as of right now, we'll see how this weekly candle ends up closing. And of course, we have the ETF launch in mid to late July, which should have a huge impact on Ethereum and the general Ethereum sentiment and narrative. But for now, chart doesn't look amazing, but we haven't broken structure quite yet, but doesn't look that strong either. However, when it comes to strong charts, Solana has been incredibly impressive, still below its 20 week moving average. So still nothing to get super excited about even though it's seen a nice bounce and it's been holding these equal lows. Like I said earlier, I usually don't expect equal lows to hold. We normally go down and take all of the liquidity below all of those lows that Solana has been holding above for months now, but it's still nice to see some buy pressure stepping in and it's still nice to see the only altcoin I'm holding outside of Ethereum, if you wanna count Ethereum as an altcoin, it's nice to see that Solana has significantly outperformed just about every other altcoin this cycle so far. And I do expect that trend to continue because even for all of the hate that it gets, a lot of people actually use Solana because of its speed and low fees. And I don't see that trend going anywhere anytime soon. But even with market participants flipping back and forth during this summer chop, for me, my strategy remains unchanged as long as Bitcoin is in what I believe to be the fair value region. Once we're above 75K, we can talk about short-term overvalued and perhaps taking some profits. Once we're below 50K, we can talk about undervalued and perhaps deploying some cash and taking advantage of some opportunities. But as of right now, this is just chop in the fair value region, in my opinion, which agrees nicely with our normal cycle scenario and with the summer chop we've seen for Bitcoin historically. How low we can go is still up in the air. I really would be surprised if we get below 50K, which is why I have this marked out as unlikely, but because it's unlikely, I consider it an incredible buying opportunity if we get there. I'm not just gonna all in bet that we do, but it is a possibility even if it is unlikely. And in terms of the long term, we just wanna try and remember what Bitcoin's use case is as a debasement hedge. 
and whether or not we think quantitative easing and lower rates are going to come back because if they are bitcoin likely does well in the long term just like the s p 500 likely does well in the long term as long as the money devaluation trend continues and we continue to see monetary expansion but anyway let me know what you expect how are you handling all the fear around this sell pressure we're seeing and how are you enjoying the bitcoin summer chop would love to hear from you and see what you expect but for me i think more chop and reaccumulation is by far the most likely thing over the rest of the summer and perhaps we can start our next major uptrend around the september october time frame but anyway thank you so much for the support on the recent videos thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you soon